God says, essentially, you have taken what I said before about visiting the sins of the fathers on the, on the children of the fourth generation. You have taken and made an excuse and say, the reason why this is going on in my life is because um, of my father's sin. God says, that statement will no longer be said in Israel. You will no longer be pointing to what happened to your fathers, what your father did, as the reason why your life is messed up. You will, you will stop saying that. God said, this statement, as sure as I live, will no longer be said in the, in the land of Israel. That's what God said. It's in the Bible. So, this proverb is generally interpreted to me that the subsequent generations suffer for the sins of their ancestors. They were using this well-known proverb as an excuse to blame their forefathers for their suffering and their misfortune. Instead of them acknowledging their own guilt and taking personal responsibility for their own lives. God said, you will no longer be pointing to your fathers and say, it's because my father did it, that's why my life is messed up. God said, no. God said, no longer will, you know, will the children suffer for their parents' challenges. No longer will generational cause be allowed to pass on to the children. Everyone will stand by, by himself before God. I hope you understand that. What he says, the person who sins is the one that will die. The son will not bear. The son will not bear the punishment for the sin of the father. Nor will the father bear the punishment for the sin of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be on himself. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be on himself. So, by these sentences, totally debunked the whole concept of generational cause. It says, it may have been said in the book of Deuteronomy and Exodus, but I'm saying, going forward, the book of Ezekiel said, going forward, you don't say this anymore. You will take responsibility for your own life.